Welcome everybody to the Picture Perfect channel. Today it's all about air show photography. Let's go walk around and see what kind of planes we can photograph today. And we'll get down to some details here in a minute. All right, everybody. Detail number one. If you have any kind of forecast for rain at all, make sure you bring a rain jacket and your raincoat for your camera and lens. There was just a slight chance, I think it was like 5% of rain, and I thought, ah, it might rain. So I went ahead and, you know, I brought my, uh, my gear to protect myself and to protect the camera gear. You definitely don't want to go out and go to an air show and not be able to take pictures because you didn't bring, you know, the right equipment. You can always use something to cover it besides you know if you don't have a, a raincoat for your your camera gear i've forgotten mine at times and actually used a hat but that's definitely a detail you want to make sure another one is bring a backpack that is clear uh coming onto military bases like this for air shows you're going to want to have a clear backpack they're not going to let you bring you know a regular backpack another thing is bring a chair uh you know there's going to be a lot going on but there's going to be a lot of time to set around so I like to bring a chair and take a break from time to time, but it's amazing, you know, to see all the different aircraft and uh, some of the other military equipment that's here. I think there's also uh, sheriffs and uh, police have some of their uh, equipment here, which is cool to photograph. Um, another thing about photographing, you know, aeronautical, you know, like air shows and stuff, get to them early so you can avoid the crowds, so you can try to get a chance of you know getting something without having a bunch of people around i mean if you don't mind that that's okay me personally you know i, I try not to have people in my pictures and if you want to get a plane the propeller you know to be like that you're going to want to have an f-stop like f-11 you're going to want to have a slower shutter speed so i think that was like at 1 250 i believe and you want to have the iso low also that way it creates the blade makes it look like you know a complete circle if you go faster, it's going to stop it, obviously, in motion, and you won't be able to see that kind of action, you know, in your pictures. And I actually really like when, when I do that and can show, you know, the motion of the propeller. But let's just walk around and enjoy some of the uh, air show stuff that's here, and I'll get back to some more information on, you know, how to take uh, airplane photographs. Here's some of the, uh, one of the biplanes that they have here. That's one of the planes I really enjoy photographing, is the older planes, like the biplanes. Um, there's gonna be a lot of jets flying around too, but they do a lot of aeronautical stuff, you know, the tricks and stuff with these planes. I think the Red Bull team is gonna be here too, which is really exciting to photograph and see. But let's keep walking around and see what other kind of planes uh, they got here in the static display. If you've never been to an air show, I would definitely recommend it. Um, they're so cool. You know, we fly around in all these different planes around the world, and it's just really cool to see some of the, you know, the military's jets that fly by. They're just so amazing to watch how fast they are and how maneuverable they are. Uh, of course, the kids always love, you know, coming out and enjoying all the aircraft and stuff. I just love photographing them. I think, uh, you know, the airspace industry is absolutely amazing. The things and ideas that they come up with, we'll see later, you know, how they maneuver. It's just really amazing, some of the technology that they have in all these planes. And we got one of the helicopters coming in uh, to fly here in a second. Um, it's, you know, it's just a lot of fun to go to. So if you've never been, you should check them out. Switch 
and take the power from the remaining good engine. Here's some of the helicopters I was talking about that are coming up. This is the LAPD one. Um, I think they got the sheriff is here too and maybe Border Patrol. Uh, they're just static displays, but I really enjoy, you know, checking them out and stuff, looking inside. And I've never been in a helicopter. I would definitely like to take a, you know, a flight in one one day. Um, another thing about coming to the air show, you know, depending on the weather, I try to have filters, but, you know, most cases I don't use them because I really don't like to have an extra glass on it. But we got some jets coming by here in a second. It's absolutely amazing watching these jets fly by. Now, when you want to perfect them, you got to get a low f-stop, a very fast shutter speed, and a relatively, you know, the ISO to match the shutter speed. If you want to stop action, you got to have at least over one one thousand of a second in the shutter speed. For jets, I actually like to go one over four thousand if I can help it. And you know, like I was saying earlier, you can see on this one, the, the prop is almost totally blurry. It would have been a little bit better if it was a little bit slower. Um, but, you know, I try to vary off, you know, on the f-stops, you know, on the different planes to try to get that. But in most cases, it usually works. But, you know, you just got to experiment. And that's what it causes to, you know, to make the propeller look like that is the fact that it's it's not super fast. No, it was super fast. You would actually could stop the blade. It would just look like it's not even really going. And that's why I try to hire, you know, have a higher f-stop so that it does that. But it's amazing when you go to these air shows, the variety of planes that you get to, you know, see and, check them out and even walk through them and stuff this is one of the the bigger planes that i like to go check out and you know see if i can walk inside it when they have a static plane in most cases you know they don't some air shows like in arkansas i think i did but it's just fun to go to you know and check it out we'll get back to some more information on you know what the fo you know photographic setting should be 75 feet long wingspan 169 feet it's it's huge and yet it steers so rapidly how does it do that it's very deceiving because it is extremely As you can see, there's a lot more people, you know, at the at the air show right now. So I didn't take too many static pictures when I was walking around making this video because I just didn't want, you know, to get in the way and, and have people in my pictures. So I kind of just wanted to walk around and take a look at all the different, you know, airplanes and helicopters and stuff. It's just a lot of fun to go to. I always tell people, you know, when they see pictures that I've taken, you know, if you're not big into planes, just go check it out, you know, support the military. Um, I think it's important to do that. 
let's just keep walking around and see what other kind of airplanes and helicopters, you know, and vehicles uh, we can see. He's right here. Thank you. <laughs> I kind of wish it wasn't sprinkling and raining throughout the day, but I really do like the sky. Um, you know, it can make for an interesting picture. I did get to get over here earlier and photograph this car next to, you know, the plane, and there weren't that many people around. So I think I pretty, you know, it came out pretty good. Uh, one of the things I wanted to share about a detail that's important is when you're photographing the planes, you really want to see if you can get a lens or have a lens that has a panning option on it. And when you pan, you got to move, you know, really slow and just try to, you know, get tacked on to that, you know, that target that you're trying to photograph. Um, we got some more planes that are come up and fly by. We'll, we'll list those and watch those fly by. And I'll get back and talk a little bit more when I get to some of the pictures. By wire system. Can you explain what that means? It's Basically, it gives us an advantage instead of just mechanical controls on the aircraft. Uh, helps make it more maneuverable and assists us with flying it. So you turn... That's, even that is, that's a lot for a big airplane. Sure is. Good eye, Rob. That is exactly 45 degrees. All of that changes the shape of the wing. Why? Sure does. So it helps us fly at lower speeds. Uh, as you'll see here now, we're coming up on the approach speed, so we're flying very slow for a big plane. And what, about 150 miles an hour would it be as that slow as that? That's kind of tell there's a lot going on in an air show you know that you can enjoy and you can see in this one how the blade looks like it's almost gone and that's what I mean when you can get the right combination of f-stop and shutter speed and ISO you can stop that blade in a way that it just looks better to me you know when you do that and when it comes to just like this 
you're going to you're going to want to have like an f-stop for 2.0 whatever you can get 5.6 6.3 low as you can get and a shutter speed combination that's over a thousand for me with these i like to be over like one 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 four over four thousand you know in the shutter speed because it's just got to be fast and like i said earlier you know panning option on your lens if you have it that way you know it does help i i have that option on mine and it definitely makes a difference and you just gotta lock on to it you know and just be patient and slowly move you know don't you know don't try to jerk your lens around too much or it's going to come out you know pretty blurry but let's watch this one i think this one's going to take off here soon in a second and we'll talk more about you know the pictures you need to you know the stuff you need to do to take the pictures correctly With helicopters, it's the same thing. You're going to want to have that combination, you know, to stop the uh, uh, the blades, you know, in a way that it, it just looks to me a lot better than just doing it, you know, with the faster shutter speed where it just stops from singular. I just like the blurred action that it causes when you do that. You know, it's up to you. It's whatever you like. Some people may like it the other way. I think most people like, you know, seeing them the other, you know, the other way with it's nice and blurry. Um, something, else, something else to remember is I personally like to use a tripod. In most cases, um, I know a lot of people will handhold. You know, these these cameras these days are pretty light, but for me specifically, I I still like to use a tripod when it comes to doing the airplane photography and photographing helicopters and stuff in the air. I just like the more you know support that I have because a lot of times you know I come close to falling over when I'm not paying attention and I'm trying to follow and there's all these people around. You know, with the tripod, it kind of gives me a little bit of a separation. You just got to be careful, you know, not tripping over the legs or anything. Um, it's something I've had a little bit of trouble with, you know, but I just, you know, try to be patient about it and just follow whatever I'm trying to photograph, you know, you know try to get a good, a good picture of it. And, you know, if you can, I, I like to get a lot of static pictures if possible. Um, I just try to look for, you know, a unique composition if I can find it. But there's a lot of things going on in an air show. There's, you know, there's breaks within, you know, everything flying and stuff. But, you know, I try to make sure, like I said earlier, get there early in the morning, like right when the gates open up. I think that's the best time to get there, and especially, you know, where I went, Mira Mesa, out in San Diego. It was just such a huge show, and there's just so many people. You kind of, you know, want to make sure you beat the traffic. But, it ha you know, have a lot of fun when you go to these air shows. I mean, for me, I, I really focus in on trying to get, you know, something great. Today, I really didn't think I got anything, you know, really good. I did like the static picture of the car next to the plane. I thought that looked really nice. It's a black and white. Um, I was hoping to get something, you know, really nice up in the sky, but the light was pretty bad. The sun really never came out too much. I mean, there was a little bit of light, but it wasn't really anything good. You know, that's what, to me, photography is all about. No matter what you're photographing, it's the light. The lack of light or, you know, really good light. Of course, golden hour, early in the morning, later on in the evening for the sun setting is always good. Um, but you just want to make sure, you know, that you have a good time. You know, talk to, you know, the people in the, the military that are there. It's really cool, you know, to meet the military people and just get to know them a little bit and tell them you appreciate, you know, what they do. Um, this is something that I thought was pretty cool. Um, I thought I was going to snap his finger off. But that's the thing about these air shows. You get a chance to see and and photograph things you may not ever get a chance to see anywhere else but an air show and i thought this little robot robot was kind of cool you know to check it out and i got some okay pictures but i really wanted to go back and go back you know and get the planes to see if i can get some more static shots so let's just keep walking around and see what i find Oh, this right here is James. He's a friend of mine from Texas. He came out and uh, came out to the air show with me. And it was a really good day, so I'm really glad he came out and came out to the air show. He's a veteran also, so I always tell your veterans, you know, you appreciate, you appreciate them.
my favorite pictures, you know, from the air show. And they also have, you know, the car display and the trucks and stuff. Uh, it was a really good day, you know, except for the light could have been better. You know, and I tried to get some of the soldiers. I don't want to show their faces or anything, but, you know, sometimes I'll show some of the pilots and stuff. But, yeah, it was kind of cool, you know, to see them standing there and the light came out a little bit. And I thought this looked pretty cool. Um, you know, it just got to be, you know, respectful. I don't want to take too many pictures of their faces and stuff. Um, but you can see here, F56, 1 over 64. You see, it's not that good. It would be a lot better if it was over 1,000. This is one of the car pictures I was talking about, you know, and the cars I try to go a little bit higher, F11. A lot of people want to do, you know, F56, but I'm on the ground, so I have support. I really didn't need a tripod. And the static displays, every once in a while when the sun came out, it was nice. You know, I got some pretty decent shots. I'm always looking for something, you know, unique. And then, of course, a lot of air shows, they do the explosions, you know, and everything flies by. And, it's, you know, it's dramatic, I'll say that. <laughs> And then, you know, you got the, the helicopters moving all the equipment around. It was really cool to see, you know, how they can get around so easily. And like I said, you know, like this one, you can see the blade isn't completely blurred out. You can still see a little bit where it came close, you know, to where it would stop it as a singular blade. Like these are a little bit better. It could have been a little bit slower, <laughs> but it's not bad. Um, but I like it when it's a complete blur. Like the one on the front looks a lot better. And then, of course, you got the jets. This, another one. It's barely going, so it was okay to have it, you know, not be over a thousand, but it'd be better if it was. And once it started flying, I definitely had to crank it up a little bit just to make sure that I, you know, stop the action, make it look good. And of course, you know, you got more people in the way. And me, I kind of, you know, try to get the people. And I oversaturated this one. I kind of like the colors in it. Um, the next one's not that much, as you can see the difference in it. But I kind of like it, you know, it's kind of cool. It kind of frames the plane a little bit. Um, and, you know, and there's always going to be people in your way, so I try to integrate, you know, the people into my pictures. And, of course, when the planes land, you know, I try to be on the side where I can see them coming in and taking off, you know, wherever they're parked from, and then that's where they, you know, they start taking off. This is another one. I was trying to get the blades a little bit more, but you can see it's always trial and error. You just got to try different settings out. This one was a lot better. I also liked, you know, the color of the sky. A bunch of smoke had gone by, so it kind of made a little hazy and pink. This is probably one of my favorite pictures. Um, I really love, you know, photographing the biplanes. And that, you can see, it's an F-10, 125 second, ISO, 125. And this is another one that I think is probably better than the other one, of the car and the plane. I just, I just love it as a black and white. I thought it was really cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you want to check out some more information, just check out michaelvancepemerton.com. And you can go there and learn all, you know, all different types of photography. You guys have a great day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.